How I pray this morning that you grant us a beautiful, beautiful visitation and habitation of your presence, of your grace, of your glory, and your power. May your word fall as manna from heaven this morning. And I pray that at Rosedale you saturate these walls with a beautiful anointing, the unction to function as you touch our hearts to never be the same again as you turn every stone and transform us forever to the glory of your name. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, everybody say, Amen with me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm struggling a little bit with it. I don't know if it's the monitors that are out or uh, I, I can hardly hear myself. Glory to God. Glory to God. But if you hear me well, we can proceed. Can you hear me? Can you hear me well? All right, wonderful. Well, I will say I'm absolutely delighted this morning. And I can't say how elated my heart is to be at Rosedale again. My greatest, greatest joy and thanksgiving to uh, my very good friend, I call him the legendary uh, Pastor A, the Reverend Alexander. Yes, sir. Thank you so Beautiful. That's what I was looking for. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now I'll break that table. Hallelujah. Well, good morning, everybody. Yes, I am so absolutely overjoyed, blessed, and uh, uh, I feel favored to be at Rosedale again. I was here last year, and uh, your, 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 your life and your impact has been on my heart uh, to date. Amen. Uh, Pastor Gregory Alexander, together with his lovely wife Penny and his family, his uh, amazing uh, sisters, have all been uh, a beautiful, beautiful joy to my heart. Amen. Uh, all of my very good friends that I have met here and the family, uh, uh, I'm so delighted to be back yet again and I'm so glad that I get an opportunity to be at Rosedale again. May the Lord continue to do you good and may the Lord continue to bless you beyond repair like we say at home. Uh, may the Lord transform your life daily, cause you to become larger and larger in your faith and in your believing that great and mighty things will continue to happen in your life. Hallelujah. Well, uh, like Pastor A said, I come all the way from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm blessed together with my wife to be pastoring the Beacon Life Church in Nairobi. And uh, that is your family too. So you are welcome. You are welcome. You are welcome to Kenya. Those of you that haven't been to Kenya, I know this church is passionate on missions and you have been, uh, uh, you know, uh, for many years coming to Kenya, uh, but those that have not had an opportunity, I give you an official invite this morning uh, that Nairobi should be on your bucket list in the next few years, and I pray that the Lord will make it happen. You know, I read one writer, it's called R. Elliot, and he says, if you have two continents you want to visit in your lifetime, visit Africa twice. And I would like to uh, voice his thoughts to Rosedale. Those of you that have not made that wonderful pilgrimage, uh, uh, may the Lord make it possible for you. All right? Uh, family is the friends you find on the way. And uh, for me, that's my description of Rosedale. This is only my second time here, but many, many, many years of relating with Pastor A and his team. And I can tell you that indeed, uh, this man and his family and the people around him have become family to be uh, confirming that indeed family are those uh, friends that you find on the way. Glory to God. Today I'm going to be doing a quick one, a quick one, a quick one, a simple one. Uh, underline the word simple there because we're going to focus on that word simplicity. Uh, but. Uh, even though my task and assignment uh, is indeed one of nobility, uh, I want to draw us into simplicity. So my anchor text today is going to be Psalm 119, and I'm going to read verse number 130. For those of you that are Bible lovers and Bible readers, and you've been in the Bible for a while, I know that you can quote it off your head. Uh, it should be one of those that you know as good as the back of your head. Psalm 119 and verse number 30. Uh, we'll talk a little bit on the complexity of life 
and uh, uh, we'll touch a little bit on Psalm 166 and verse number 6 and we'll finally end in uh, uh, should be uh, Philippians chapter number 4. Time allowing you to touch a little bit on Isaiah 14, but when you hear Philippians number 4, you know that we are landing the plane in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. So, Psalm 118 and verse number 113, and the Bible says, The entrance of thy words giveth light, it imparted understanding to the simple. Ready together with me in the kingdom here, two, three, and go. The entrance of thy word giveth light, it imparted understanding to the simple. Okay, so when I say read with me, I say let's say it together. Can we try? One, two, three, and go. The entrance of thy word giveth light, it imparted understanding to the simple. All right, you sound to me like you need paracetamol for this morning. Probably otherwise. Let's try it one more time in the name of the Lord. The entrance of thy word giveth light. It imparted understanding to the simple. Hallelujah. So that verse has uh, two entries, and the one is the talk about the word of the Lord, and it says that it does give light. But on the other hand, it says it does something else, and the other thing that the word of the Lord does is that it giveth understanding to the simple. So I begin to imagine and to understand that when we give ourselves to the word of God, something special is going to begin to happen in your life. Because light will shine in a dark place, and the places that were obscure in your life and were out of comprehension in your life and were beyond your areas of understanding are going to come alive. And the lights are going to come on because the word of the Lord giveth light, but it also imparts understanding to the simple. In other words, those that are of simplicity of mind, and I will talk about that in a short while, uh, begin to receive understanding from the Lord or understanding from the word of the Lord. I want to use that text this morning as I exegete what I would want to call my subject, the grand transition. The grand transition in my mind this morning is the deliberate movement from complexity to simplicity. From the complexity of life uh, to the zone of uh, simplicity. If you want to give it a theological understanding or extrapolation there, I would say it is the translation from your will to his will. A movement from my will uh, to the submission uh, to the will of God. From complexity of human will and imagination to the simplicity of divine order, divine expression and divine agenda. So I'm so delighted to be here, right here in the Motor City at Rosedale, and I'm so glad to be unraveling something that has been burning in my heart all week. Indeed, the grand transition, because I want in the next 40 minutes when I'm done with you to be marinated enough in your mind that you will have the willingness to begin to move from complexity to simplicity. When we talk about transition, I think about three that are very uh, clear that everybody seems to understand. That is the transition to hatch, the transition to match, and the transition to dispatch. Let's break that down. To hatch would be to birth or to be born. Because one is moving and having a translation from the womb of their mother, a completely different world altogether, moving into this world. But then we have the match, which is when a man gets married to his wife, you are moving from another womb altogether of a life of a, a single life and managing by yourself and uh, uh, domineering on yourself and managing your life and uh, guiding yourself into another space of uh, a commitment of sacrifice of a life together with another person. It is a transition from one realm into the other. But we also have the dispatch that we otherwise would call death and this is when someone leaves the womb of this world as we know it having lived their days that the Lord will grant them on the planet and then they begin to move yet into another realm uh, and another realm otherwise known as the afterlife. It is a transition. But when I talk this morning, I'm not talking the heart, neither am I talking the match, I'm not talking the dispatch. 
I'm talking the transition from the complexity of life to make up your mind to begin to live a simple life. A simple life, ladies and gentlemen, would be the authenticity of lifestyle that begins to prioritize minimalism and contentment, a focus on the essentials or the things that really matter in your life. A simple life, my brothers and sisters, would be the decluttering of your life and beginning to become mindful and connecting with nature, connecting with the attitude of gratitude, and connecting with your life, what balance, etc., etc. Finding yourself in a place where you choose to come from the complexity of life where everything is mashed up and mixed up into everything you can imagine into the liberty of a simplified life. Because life, in my opinion this morning, is too short to be complicated. Even if you live like Moses, 120 years, to have 50 of those years complicated and unhappy and confused and traumatized will not be worth a living because life is too short to be complicated. I think about a situation where you walk into a coffee shop and you want some coffee and a good lady comes to serve you up. The moment you say coffee, they'll ask cappuccino, latte, mocha, or macchiato. Now, that is complication. But I think about it and say, let's go cappuccino. And the good lady will say, pick up or regular. Now, I'm beginning to get agitated because it's getting complicated. I will, however, say cappuccino. And then you'll go ahead and say, pick up or regular. I'm really troubled now because it's really complicated. But let's just go take a fair anyway. And then you'll ask sugar or no sugar or, or, or sweetener or what do you want with it? I will say sugar and then you'll ask do you want brown or do you want white? Because life is like that. Everything is always getting complicated. Things added and layered upon layer. Question after question. Complication after complication. Can we just have some coffee? Where I say I want some coffee, just deliver some coffee because that is or should be the simplicity of life. The glory to God. I think about relationships and that will be a very deep study if we go in the area of relationships and complexity because many of them, the Gen Z's today where I come from, they don't talk about relationships, they talk about situationships because relationships have become so complicated that it's a situation of some kind and you see their status on Facebook and say status complicate because it is a complicated situation. It's a kind of spaghetti uh, complication. You see spaghetti when it is well done and all you need is some, uh, uh, some sauce to begin to go down. The thing is wrapped up and just complicated like the human brain. Uh, because now you talk marriage, complicated. You talk your dating relationship, complicated. You talk your work ethic, complicated. You talk your ministry life, complicated. You talk your children and your parenting, complicated. You talk your relationship with your siblings, complicated. Ladies and gentlemen, these preachers come all the way from Africa to remind you that life can be simple in the word of the Lord. And if we will give ourselves to the word of God, it will give light and it will give understanding to the simple. The word of God will take us back to the simplicity of life where we will love uh, the unlovable and give ourselves to do uh, the things that others would otherwise think impossible. I think about the salvation uh, concept. I mean the Greek is what they call soteriology. And you know soteriology sounds so big a word, uh, but it is simply the translation from the kingdom of darkness to the power of light. It is a movement from a darkness of light into the marvelous light. He says you are a chosen generation. He says you are a royal priesthood. He says you are a peculiar people that he has called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Because you see, darkness is a whole environment of complication. The intensity of complexity is really equated to darkness. I remember one philosopher that talks about a dark man in a dark room looking for a black card. I mean, the whole thing is just complication because it is trying to find a destiny that you really will never be able to catch. Life can be simple as ABC. I say life can be simple in 
the word of the Lord and in our relationship with God as simple as a one, two, three. And if you're a lover of Greek, we can say life is as simple as Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, or Iota, Kappa. Because life must begin to disintegrate from the complexity we know into the simplicity of life that brings the glory to God. Simplicity is clarity and straightforwardness. How would you like it when you wake up in the morning and you just simply live a simple life? There's clarity on every matter. You are straightforward on every matter. You don't rotate and move around and, and move around before you land the plane. You simply say what you need to say and you simply leave what you need to leave and you simply do what you need to do. Glory, hallelujah. Sometimes simplicity, because simplicity may be misunderstood to be foolishness or naivety. Because you see, the Hebrew word for simple, as from the text we have read, is the word pefe, which means foolishness, naivety, silly, or seducible. Seducible. They catch you into realms you shouldn't be in. They seduce you into doing things uh, that you shouldn't do. But I want not to keep Hebrew this morning. I want us to keep the mind of the basic English understanding. We don't need no interpretation. Your life can be a simple life. Your life can be an elevated life in simplicity, pure, instead of God, that you live to the glory of God. And like I said, that it is not naivety, stupidity, or foolishness. Sometimes to be simple is to simply sue them. Because if you don't sue them, now the, the situation becomes complicated. So when I talk simplicity here, I'm talking about the truth in the middle that calls your life from the extremities of being too hot or too cold. Because both extremes can be complicated. We want to stay in the truth in the middle, have a balanced life, by the word of God, by the grace of God, and be elevated out of the foolishness of life, the naivety of your birth, or some sense of, of seducibility, and catch yourself in the place of the true peace of simplicity, where the Holy Ghost is at home in your life, and the Lord celebrates what you do, because now His will has become the very will of your life. The scripture teaches by the Paul in Ephesus that he has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. If we read that Psalm 119, verse number 130, from the Amplified Classic, he says, he brings, you see the King James, he says, he brings light and imparted understanding to the simple. The Amplified says, he brings discernment and complication, the discernment and complication. Comprehension. I almost missed it. That this is comprehension. Discernment and comprehension to the simple. Your life needs discernment that is embedded in simplicity. Your life needs this uh, co comprehension that is based in simplicity. Sometimes we are so complicated that we cannot discern some of the basic simplest of things. Hallelujah. I had someone say, if it walks like a dog, and barks like a dog, and shakes like a dog, it is most likely a dog. But because of the complexities of our lives, it will be a dog staring in your face, and you refuse to see a dog, because complexity tells you. He might just might be a good man. It is very unlikely that you find somebody troubled in their relationship that did not know that it would be from the beginning. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Then we have the message translation of Eugene. You know what he says on that text? He says, break open your words. That's the entrance of thy word, give us light. He says, break open your words. He says, let the light shine out. Let ordinary people see the meaning. That's my assignment this morning, ladies and gentlemen. That ordinary people will see the meaning to life. Life is not just for the big scientists that have the equations and put things together. Ordinary people can see the meaning of life according to the scriptures. Look at your neighbor and help me preach to yourself as you say, simple. Simplify. Whatever is coming in your life, simplify. Whatever the challenge is on your table today, simplify. Whatever the questions going around in your workplace, simplify. Because if you choose to go the way of simple and simply, you will hear the voice in your ear say, This is the way. Walk in it. You've not yet had direction because your choice is the path of complication that makes it. And bring, makes it almost, in, uh, brings in, in, what is the word, in, uh, 
audibility uh, or unevable, whatever, whatever you say. It, you are unable to be, to, to hear the audio of the divine in your life because the space is complicated. Simplify, the Latin is simplex. It means to make simple, to reduce what is complex to a greater simplicity, to make plain or easy. In the New Testament, it is called the, the apocalypse, simply meaning revelation. In other words, stepping into simplicity is to remove the covering off so that we shall see it as it is. Most of the hypocrisy in our lives, it is because we've chosen the path of complexity. You see, the word for hypocrisy is the word hypocritus in the Greek, which means a mask. And when you are masked, you are complicated because we think you are this, and yet in reality you are that. You can imagine what is happening to our world, to our churches, to our organizations, to our families, when you show up and we think you are that, and yet in reality you are that. We need apocalypses so that the veil is removed, so that we know you for who you are, you live the life for who you are. When you say the check is in the mail, it is in the mail. When you look up and say it's a Rolex, it is indeed a Rolex. When you say the dog ate the homework, it is indeed the dog that ate the homework. Let's stop the complexity and life will be simple again. I tell you, you will enjoy your life and have the attitude of gratitude and celebrate God for the rest of your days. You can either choose the path of the quadratic equation of complexity or choose the simple life by choice on focusing on the things that really matters. One guy says, no, he is not my son. No, he cannot be my son. He goes to court as a witness and he says, no, he cannot be my son. But even the blind can see. We look at that nose and we see you. We look at those eyes, we see you. Even the toenail says, the son is yours. But he said, no, he can be my son. So you know what we do? We are going to simplify with a DNA test. Because that's how simple it goes. Can you imagine that when we leave the simple life, it is all bright and clear. We don't have to argue for the rest of our days. We don't have to fight and strive the rest of our days. We don't have to live in anger and bitterness the rest of our days because we've chosen the simple life. We give everything coming out with a simple test that draws all men to simplicity and clarity of life. Simplicity will let you grasp the profound uh, spiritual truth in the practice of your life. All right? This is not a, necessarily the extensive theological study that we think we need. Because you see, you can know all the systematic theology. Talk to us about pneumatology. Talk to us about eschatology. Talk to us about soteriology. Talk to us about all the theologies there is. But you see, the problem is you can't love your neighbor. You see, the problem is that you cast them that cast you. You see, the problem is that you, you can't break your heart to minister to your community. You don't have service in spite of all the theology because above and beyond the study God is calling us to simplicity the entrance of your world give it light you see theology entered but the word has not yet entered because when the word enters there's going to be transformation in the way you live there's going to be transformation in the way of your life and you will see it in the reflection of your simplicity ladies and gentlemen i have a little story where the grandma is asking their little baby why did the thermometer go to call it for and the answer the little baby is i guess to get more degrees and the mother gives a statement that blows my mind when she says and yet no matter the number of degrees that the thermometer has, it still cannot control the temperature. Because you see, simplicity builds you into a space of true control. Not just domineering and, and taking charge of others, but to be able to control with the Father heart of God. That when you love, you truly love. When you give, you really give. When you bless, you really bless. Because you govern and challenge your environment. That is the thermostat. The thermostat controls the space and gives us the temperature, gives us the degrees. You see, if the thermometer can only measure but cannot do anything about that, and in my mind, that is complexity, where all you do is to measure it and talk about it and gossip about it and write a paper about it, but you cannot really command a change in 
in it. Because you see, sometimes our spiritual deep is only complicated. You put on this spiritual face that makes you feel like you're the most brilliant thing around the world. But between me and you, we know a little secret that you're just complicated. You are just intimidated inside. You are just inferior on the side. Or maybe feeling superior on the side. You want to kick around and boss everybody. But the heart is complicated. On the inside, you are complicated. And this preacher is laboring here this morning at Rosedale to say, come with me to higher ground. Come with me to the holy mount. Come let's climb the holy mountain. And he says, you shall ascend my holy hill. He says, those that have clean hands and those with a pure heart. I call that simplicity. Let's lay down the baggage of our complexity. I know you are in your second marriage, but you don't have to carry all that baggage. I know you know, this, that, and the other happen. It looks like Jack will kill the trunk. You don't have to carry that. Hallelujah. Look up to God. Be purified again. Let the simplicity of life return. That your smile will not be that smile I found in America. Like and then you think you're connecting and then it's gone in a moment. Can you smile and really be smiling? Can you happy and really be happy? Can you joy and really be joy? Can you be glad and really be glad? Because the higher call to life is a call to simplicity. Somebody say, Amen. That's a nice American Amen. Give me a real African Amen. Say, Amen. Come on, one more time. Say, Amen. Do you know that Albert esteems all his science and physics from the study of energy was simplified to one little thing called E equals MC squared. And that's where our life needs to be lived. You can either choose to be in the books of science and physics all your life or run with E equals MC squared and change the world with the understanding of energy and science. In my study, when we were trying on Bible and preaching, we were told when you look at the scripture, number one, observation, number two, interpret, number three, application. And today I want to settle in the area of application. Because until we apply in simplicity, our Christian is still, the juice is not yet flowing. Juice is not yet flowing. We are not yet the light, we are not yet the soul. Glory to God. Simplicity of faith. Simplicity is the illustration of complex ideas broken down to relatable terms, backing our faith into practice. Our faith must be practiced. And the practice of our faith must be in simplicity. I heard that Hebrews 11 and 1 say that faith apparently is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now you can write manuals and encyclopedias on faith, but when it is all said and done, it must be the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. The practice should be that we really believe God for the impossible and reach out and believe that we already have what we don't have seem to have in the natural world because we believe that God has given us the grace to deliver what he has put in our lives for us. In Psalm 166 and verse number 6 the Bible says that the Lord will preserve the simple because in simplicity there is preservation. Oh hallelujah. In simplicity there is preservation. So you have a young man die at 23, what was the problem? Drinking while driving. Accident, three other people died. None of them had to die, including himself. But the complexity, can you imagine the complexity of drinking and driving? I didn't hear to come here to do some kind of counseling. All I'm trying to say, my brothers and sisters, let's come back to the simple life. The simple life, how do you go forward? I had one man say, one foot in front of the other. Big, big life principle, can you imagine? But it sounds as simple as it sounds in the English language. You want to go forward, one foot in front of the other. And if you don't walk in that simplicity, you can sit stuck and stagnant for the rest of your days. How do I become great is the philosophical question. And the great answer in simplicity is by serving others. Because the way up is the way down. And I tell you at Rosedale, you'll never live a life long enough to tell how great you are and how great this church and this ministry is until you see the wealth and beauty embedded in your service for others. Because every time you step out, to be able to do things for others and not just for yourself. You are elevated in the simplicity of spiritual life. 
the I mean, Jesus, Jesus talked about John the Baptist, and he said, This guy, John the Baptist, there is none as great as him. And he was wearing, eating honey and locusts, and wearing cut out hair, and Jesus says, The greatest among them all. Simplicity. Hallelujah. And yet he said, The smallest in the kingdom is greater than John because he's calling us to that life of service. In one place, he looks at the basket as they give the offering in the temple, and he says, that woman that gave them life gave all but stronger than all of them. What, what are you trying to say, Jesus? Bigger than the millionaires that have reached some million bucks in here. Jesus says, oh yes, because that's it, what he says. You see, uh, they gave a million and kept 99 million. But what she did when she gave is that she gave her all. And a good sight of simplicity and honor, that's the badge of honor right there. Am I talking to anybody this morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Peter, yeah. all right, go ahead and clap those hands. That's right. Go ahead. I appreciate that. Thank you. Listen to this. Jesus comes up on the water. Peter is in the boat. They think it is a ghost. That's complication. And then, and then Jesus said, Fear the Lord, it is I. A powerful principle to life. Because most of the time you are afraid to go for it. You don't realize it is actually the Lord. So for those of you that are waiting for a prophetic word, you just want one. Fear not, it is I. Right. It is the Lord right in the middle of that mess. So don't be afraid to go for it. But you see, Peter says, yes, complicating here and matters again. He said, well, Lord, if it be you, bid me to come. You know what Jesus said? I, I think about that and I imagine if I was Jesus, I would begin to give the formula and I would give the Pythagoras theorem and say, well, now, uh, you know, pi r squared, the law of flotation, if you're able to be at this apple and stretch out your hand to me, maybe you'll be able to walk on Jesus on water. Jesus don't go the path of complexity. Do you want to hear his formula to the miracle? He simply says, oh, oh my God. Can you imagine how far that can take you? And I can hear the voice of God this morning that was there. To many of you, he says, come. Because in the realm of simplicity, your balance will be broken, your life will become lighter, you will fly higher and go farther. Because when the weight is so heavy, you cannot run as fast as you should. The Bible says we lay aside every weight and the, and the sin that that so easily beset us. The brother is here to say, all the way from Nairobi, Kenya, let's come back to the simple life. Jesus of Nazareth preached it like this. He said, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that despitefully use you. You think about that and it sounds so complicated, but there's no complexity in love, ladies and gentlemen. If you love and choose to love, there's no complication about loving those that hate you. You think you want to hate those that hate you and give them what they deserve? Apparently they don't deserve hate. That's why they hate. They really deserve love because that will change their life. Oh, hallelujah. I read about a few complicated and allow me to indulge you. This guy says, the theory of relativity fundamentally transformed our understanding of space, time, and gravity, revealing that these concepts are intertwined and relative to the observer. If I ask you to tell me what that is, I know you have no clue. Because it's simply saying that relativity expresses space and time and gravity. And depending on how you observe, those can change. But the language is so complicated that we almost cannot comprehend it. You know? Another one says, the universe is a vast intricate tapestry of matter and energy, covered by a, a set of physical laws that we only are beginning to comprehend. Come on, simplify life. Because all the brother is saying is that the universe is so big, it is full of matter and energy, and we don't yet know all of it. Now, I just gave you an example of how we can choose to so complicate our lives that you live through your life 35 years and when we look back, we just can't understand because it is like art in abstract. And ladies and gentlemen, this morning, God is calling and throwing you and me back to a realm of simplicity where we should love as we ought, walk as we ought, fly as we should, do the will of God instead of our will because the will of man will always bring you into the era of complexity. I hear a generation Z talk today and they talk things like ETA for estimated time of arrival. They say things like FYI for your information. I've even seen LOL for love out loud 
and then they add E A C to make it is really loudness. Then I'm seeing them say D I Y that you do it yourself. O M G to say oh my God and we can go on and on and on. All they are trying to do is to simplify. And you're listening. So rather than go oh my God and touch yourself all over, we can't do that on the phone and screen a message. So all they do is oh. Empty. And you get the point because simplicity transitions life into the next level. And I pray for somebody here under the sounding of my voice this morning that whatever is complicated in your life will have an opportunity by the grace of God into the grand transition that brings you back into the peace, the tranquility, and the honor of simplicity. You will be surprised, but simplicity will break 95% of all psychological disorders. Yeah. Simplicity, complexity, the other way of saying complexity is depression. Because it's only equal to the degree that you've allowed complexity in your mind. I know you are fine, nice Americans that are neat and you have your table etiquette. You put your napkin right below your black bow tie and only your white dinner shirt. You pick up the table knife in your right hand and your fork in your left hand. And then you have the spoon left on the side for the soup. And then you see you have another fork for the, for the fruit and the dessert. And you eat small, small like the French in Paris, you know. <laughs> Now, thank you, I say, for all that wonderful, complicated etiquette. But when I'm hanging in my house at home, I simply grab the meat and I dig it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm calling my brothers and sisters this morning to that space yet again of uh, simplicity. Hallelujah. We complicated church with our suits and ties, celebrity mess and rigmarole preaching and all manner of doxologies. I say, let us simplify. What if we simply love God and his people? What if we just step to the water and work the miracle? What if we just step into the deep waters and try to help somebody come out of there? Jesus of Nazareth said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Is it to be simple? I'm glad you asked, and I will give you the French principle of noblesse oblige, which simply means that the nobles are obligated. In other words, you make the choice to be the nobler one in that relationship and choose the path of nobility to be simple because when you are simple, forgiveness will happen. When you are simple, that thing will be broken. I know you are divorced, but you can still love them or them anyway. They are, they are married to somebody else, but when you meet them, you don't have to cast. Because the simplicity of life is such that the nobler one is the bigger heart that decides to take the law of love. Forgiveness is in simplicity. Apologize is simplicity. Bearing each other's burden is simplicity. Mourn with those that mourn is simplicity. Rejoice with those that rejoice. Strengthen the weak in the spirit of meekness. That is simplicity. The good book said, love this time. I know you've been trying to preach to us that love is complicated. <laughs> the Bible says that the love of God is time. In other words, when I show you kindness, I'm demonstrating the highest level of simplicity that complexity can never can never beat. Glory to God forevermore. Let me begin to wind it out. I can see my minutes are rolling. A young Baima and a young pastor is seeking for a pastorate. And he goes up to this church and, uh, and, uh, and the pulpit committee has invited him so that they can be able to ask him some questions and do an interview on him. And, uh, and you're going to be amazed on the display of biblical ignorance and a mixture of fracas and complexity. Listen to the story. They ask him, so son, do you know the Bible well? He says, yes, I know several parts. He said, which is your best part? He said, the New Testament. He said, okay, in the New Testament, could you still, could you please tell me the story of the prodigal son? And the young man says, that's fine. He begins the story of the prodigal son. There was a man of the Pharisee named Nicodemus who went down to Jericho by night and he fell among the stony ground. And the thorns chopped him half dead. The next morning, Solomon and his wife, Gomorrah, came back and carried him down to the ark of Moses so they can take care of him. But as he was going through the eastern gate into the ark, his hair was caught in the limb. And he hung there 40 days and 40 nights. And afterward, he did a hand 
land and the ravens came to feed him. <laughs> On the next day, three wise men came and carried him down the boat, uh, the boat dock, and uh, he was caught up in the ship to Nineveh. And when he got there, he found Delilah sitting up on the wall, and he said, throw him down, throw him down, boys, throw her down. And they said, how many times should we throw her down? He said, seven times seven. And he, and he said, nay, but seventy times seven. And they threw her down four hundred and ninety times. And when she was thrown down, she burst asunder uh, and broke into many pieces. And they gathered to baskets of the leftovers. And in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be? <laughs> Complexity. It's a funny story, but a powerful representation of how complicated life can be when we think it is really the simple life. Let your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. Not my will, but your will be done. The greatest display of simplicity that Jesus chooses not to let the cup pass, but to commit himself to the will of God. One of the biggest dilemmas of the human race is the eye syndrome. Because every time we've committed ourselves to the eye, we have been stuck in the complexity of trying to run it and gather it. I had one man talk about business and money and he said that you get all you can and can all you get and sit upon the car. That is complexity. Because you see, just like there is ear in the middle of every heart, in other words, the word heart has the word ear in the middle of it, that's how the eye sits in the middle of every scene. And you will do the research and find that everywhere sin has prevailed is because there is one man and woman that chose to have the eye in the middle. Isaiah 14, I said I'll talk about it a little bit, I will touch a little bit. That's the diabolical display of what was happening in the heavens before the creation of the earth. And you know what? He said, I will be like God. I will be like the Most High. I will sit on His throne and do this and do that. I will. And the I will became the translation of one beautiful, magnificent angel into that diabolical uh, sense of all sin as you know it. What's the preacher saying today? Kiss your life. Kiss your life. Keep it simple. Keep it sweet. Your husband will love you better when life is simple. Your children will celebrate you more when life is simple. I know every time they come from there, it is like you're igniting the box woman better if you remember it. But when you choose the simple life, you'll become a magnet of all beauty because everybody wants the sweetness of a simple life. Ha! There is a phrase called VUCA, and if you research it, you'll find it's one used a lot in the American war space today, and it simply means volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. I submit to you, my brothers and sisters, let's walk from all of that and come back to the simplest of life, where we simply are what God has called us to be. My submission is that true love is simple and not complicated. Excellence and commitment is simple and not complicated. Inviting people to church is simple and not complicated. Serving your community and others is simple and not complicated. Don't your life be as complicated as the American election? Simply live your simple life and give the glory to God. I read a beautiful quote on this penis front door, and he says, The secret of having it all is knowing that you already do. And you'll be surprised because you already have everything that you seem to be beating your life to try to search. I'm out of your way in a short while. But when Pharaoh of Egypt saw a complicated dream, Joseph brought an interpretation in simplicity. Seven years of drought, seven years of abundance, let's do this, let's save, and the miracle save the nation. When Nebuchadnezzar saw the complicated dream of kingdoms, Daniel brought interpretation with simplicity. This is the kingdom, that is the kingdom, the rock will come from heaven, crush all the kingdoms of the earth, because faith, ladies and gentlemen, is calling us into simplicity. Philippians chapter number four, and Master by that, and I say when you hear that, you're landing the plan. He said, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am there with to be content. I know both how to be abased, I also know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to 
abound and to suffer need. And verse number 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The problem is we always quote verse number 13, but we don't pay attention to the 11 and 12. Because it's choosing the simplicity of life, not to be complicated, but to be simple. Learning in whatever state I am to be content. He says, I've given myself that everywhere the things of instruction both to be full and to be hungry. In other words, both to abound and also to suffer. If you look at the tabernacle of Moses, the outer court, the middle, the, the, the holy place, the holy of holies, complication, furniture, priests going in once a year, and a big cell you can do all that. Look at the tabernacle of David. Four poles around, gathered with animal skin, put the ark of the covenant in there, and the presence of God will come down. That picture from Moses to David is the picture of Jesus coming from heaven above, leaving his glory above, coming to walk the earth. And ladies and gentlemen, I submit to you, for God, all greatness, power, and excellence, to become man embedded in, embedded in flesh and blood, is simplicity, from greatness to simplicity, and I call that the grand transition. This morning, my 40 minutes are done, I want to encourage you, when you go to work tomorrow, choose simplicity. When you come to church next week, choose simplicity. In that one meeting you're going for this week, choose simplicity. When you meet your wife at dinner tonight, choose simplicity. When you talk to your children again, choose the purpose of simplicity. Because in simplicity is true greatness. I have no doubt that you're going to become larger than life. One more time and help me preach say simplify now stand up on your feet in jesus name oh hallelujah why don't you lift those two hands above you okay go ahead give me a hand i see you want to do that go ahead do that go ahead and do that go ahead and do that all right now lift both those hands above your head let's pray together Abba, Father, I bless you this morning. I thank you for Rosedale. I thank you for Pastor A. I thank you for his leaders. I thank you for his family. I thank you for his teams. I thank you for all those that serve on this altar. I thank you for the family of Rosedale, from the greatest among them to the least among them. This morning, I speak blessing. I speak honor. I speak power and empowerment by the grace of God that you'll humble our hearts and situation of a heart of stone may the brokenness begin to happen that we will have the grand path into simplicity i speak a simple life i speak a simple mind i speak a simple walk from darkness into light and to magnify the lord of god in everything we do or say as we choose the simple life we give you praise and glory this morning in the name of jesus and everybody say amen, amen. Because I think this month will be one African American. Amen. God bless you all. I love you so much.